I think under Mickey Joseph, Greg, you'd probably attest to this. They've they've done less self destructing under Mickey than they than they did under Scott. Is that fair? Absolutely. I mean, no, it's 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 turned into the exact opposite, where guys now want to play and play hard and believe in themselves and believe in their coaches. I mean, that's the biggest thing that you know Mickey brings and Bill Bush brings is. So much uh, just the attitudes that they have and the relationships that they have with the players, it's unbelievable. And, yeah, it, it, it's a totally different squad than you saw under Scott Frost. You got guys now that believe that they can actually do it. And you've seen them, you know, ever since the coaching change was made, there's a definite change in the attitude and just the way guys play. They don't have to think as much. Everything's much more instinctual now. And, um, yeah, it's, you know, for being around all these years of misery, it's actually the best cohesive unit that I've seen, you know, offense and defense, um, just by what they do now. Saying that too, I think there's a there's a big difference in between Mickey Joseph and Mark Whipple's um, philosophies and, and what they do. And I think that uh, with with Mark Whipple calling the plays, I think sometimes Mickey Joseph uh, doesn't agree with what he's calling. And um, you know, bottom line in this league is that you've got to be able to run the ball and, and hold on and, and you know keep the ball and win the time of possession battle. And um, sometimes, you know, Mark Whipple, I think is, he, he, he doesn't like to run the ball and, and he puts Nebraska in, in a bad situation, like early in, in possessions and stuff. And um, Mickey Joseph, to me, understands that. I mean, I think bottom line, he understands that. And, um you know, we'll, we'll see going forward if, if Mickey stays in control of his team. I, I'm I'm more optimistic than I've been, you know, since uh, Nebraska fired Bo Queen. So, yeah, we're going to see. We're, we'll have to see. And, and, you know, this is this is Nebraska's season. It ends here Friday. Um, and. The worst thing, the worst taste it could leave in your mouth is, you know, if you're if you're playing your last game, and your final memory is a loss. I mean, that's got to suck. But um, you know, Nebraska's going to come in. They're they're going to be ready to go. They're not scared of Iowa for sure. And um, I think it's going to be a great game. Like you, it's going to be a very close game. Um, okay. I don't expect a lot of scoring, but, uh, you know, we'll see how it comes out. All of that said, that's been the incentive now for five consecutive years for Nebraska, and they haven't won the game. Now, they've played very close games. And, Corey, to you, I would say, in regards to Iowa's concern, for me, the concern is just the style of play. And that doesn't change in any game against a quality opponent or, in this case, a decent opponent, a capable opponent. So we saw it against Minnesota. My concern for Iowa is just they play the style of play that it, it typically keeps it close unless they, unless they just get a rash of turnovers. But I have no concern over in terms of Iowa's mindset, their focus, their fundamentals. All of that's going to be on point. I can just about guarantee it. I have all sorts of confidence in this roster and their coaches and their ability to get ready for a big game and they know what's on the line um and then they're used to they're used to close games they're used to the type game that we saw in minnesota on saturday well let me just say this and then i gotta gotta roll here mark but anthony grant uh i found it interesting just kind of perusing his his season stats one of his best performances was against minnesota which is just kind of a weird stat when you look at it because Minnesota has got one of the best rush defenses in the Big Ten. Um, 
and he eclipsed 100 yards against the Gophers. So if he can run against this Iowa D, which gave up a ton of yards this past weekend, I don't think he will for the record because I think Iowa's defense will be resilient and find a way to bounce back. But Iowa has given up yards to Chase Brown, to Blake Corum, to Mo Ibrahim. If Grant can eclipse 100 yards, you're guaranteed a close game. I mean, you're not running away with it if, if Iowa's bending, 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 bending. Um, because the only way that I think Iowa runs away with this thing is if Nebraska can't run the football, Iowa just owns field position um, because the offense is just not going to make consistent drives down the field. They had a good first quarter against Minnesota. I know the Sam Laporta injury hurt. We'll see on his status for Saturday. That'll be a storyline to follow. Um, but I have a feeling it, it, this game is going to come down to Spencer Petras and the offense needing to go down the field late. You think of the last two years, Mark, that Iowa's won this game. Uh, Spencer Petrus has really not had to do a whole lot. I know the 2020 game, I'm trying to think the 2020 game is, the, is a weird game. I know it was the Zach Van Valkenburg fumble recovery pick, whatever you want to call it there at the end that kind of sealed the deal. Last year you had the blocked punt and return by Kyler Fisher and a big run by Tyler Goodson. They've won two close games with against Nebraska with Spencer Petrus at the helm without having to march down the field without the offense really having to, to go to work in a pressure situation, in a pressure cooker, so to speak. And they didn't have to do it last week against Minnesota because Jack Campbell gets probably should have been a pick six, but he gets the interception, puts him in great field position. I give Peters credit and get a nice pass down the seam to Lachey, which put him in position. But Mark, we've still not seen this offense perform when under serious, serious pressure at the end of football games. And they struggled for those final three quarters on Saturday. So if it's a close game like we expect, you're an Iowa fan. You better hope that this defense can come through again. And I'm certainly not going to say the defense can't because they seem to do it every week. But they better come through with a with a play. If if Mo Ibrahim doesn't fumble, Mark, uh, late in that game on Saturday, we're I mean we're talking about having a totally different conversation here. And Iowa just Iowa's its way out of games, just kind of like Nebraska has <laughs> Nebraska its way out of games. So that's a wicked combination for Cornhusker fans <laughs> when you have Iowa consistently finding ways to win games and Nebraska consistently finding ways to lose games. But that being said, I think it'll be close. If it's a close game, you've got to tip your hat towards Iowa. So that could be kind of a preview on my prediction, Mark. But uh, I hate this'll you, be, this will be cool. <laughs> What's that? I said I hate you, Corey. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I'm kidding. 